Just finished the session. As promised, I said I was gonna do an AMA from here. So this is the gym I train at. King's Gym, Croydon. Hey, sweetheart. Yo. One of our resident bikini athletes, very, very good. So, I'll wait till it gets a bit quieter. I'm gonna run through a couple of things, seeing as today, we're literally two weeks out from the Olympia. Um, so I thought it'd be good to just go over a couple of things. Perhaps one being, how would you feel uh, two weeks out? Secondly, what would be beneficial to be around at two weeks out in order to help you get to the end goal? Like what sort of atmosphere, what sort of people do you need to be around? Um, let's just ask Yannicka something first actually quickly. So obviously two weeks out from the Olympia. What would you say from an outside perspective, support? Like what, what's a positive energy for someone like me that's this close to a show? Because you'll notice some days I feel like I'll say to you, I want to have a quiet training session and I'll go to a different gym. Some days I'm like, I need to be around some energy. Do you think one of the most beneficial things to someone that's this close to a show is having options? Yeah. Like n not being because too set. Your mood is very different depending on how you feel on a day. Yeah. So yeah. So you don't always, so train you basically can't be too stuck in one way. You know like how people, they project the bodybuilding to be a very orderly construct that never has any adjustment or change, it has to be a certain way. I, I'm going to preach the total opposite. I'm going to say that when you're competing at a high level, doing the Olympia and stuff like that, even nationals, whatever it may be, I think you need to be in a position where you have some mobility to be able to pick and choose, to change environments, to not too fit, to feel not too set in your ways. Because one of the worst things I found in previous preps is the feeling of being trapped and stuck in a rut and not having like any options in order to one mix things up, spice things up and feel like, oh look, I've got some flavour. Uh, but secondly also like if you're really not feeling something, feeling like you're tied in and you can't avoid it is one of the worst feelings. Obviously, bodybuilders are really bad at like signing up to things and then last minute pulling out, you know, like family events, um, hanging around with people, dinner dates. Like we're the worst people for seeing things through sometimes when we're close to a show because obviously the show takes priority. Uh, I know that because I'm really bad at it. So with that being a personality trait that comes with bodybuilding, honestly guys, you've got to leave yourself with some, some options. I suppose what I'm just trying to say really is, if you've got a show in three weeks time, some mornings you're gonna wake up on top of the world, some mornings you're gonna wake up feeling like it's the end of the world. And while well, I put my belt on, it's gonna put you here. Um, and while that be the case, can you hold it? You're gonna go just seconds. The last thing I would advise for anybody is to go against how you feel day in, day out. Because if you keep going against how you feel, just like in life, eventually you're gonna break. You can't go against the grain constantly and not expect something to shatter. So just make so sure that you have options. Anyway, so yeah, we just finished our training session. I just thought I'd highlight that quickly. I know that's a very vague kind of thing. But two, with those options, you have to have some sort of reason to have them in place. Like this gym for me, it's my home gym. The reason I like this gym on certain days is that when I need external motivation and I don't have any internal motivation, I need a bit of music, a bit of loud, a bit of hard training, this is comfort and this is a place to go where I know that that's always gonna be available. Um, I know that I can always come in here and count on people around me training maximally. And if you feed off that, then that's perfect. Other days, I'll be like, I don't wanna be around the loud noise and I actually don't wanna be around other people that are performing super well because I actually feel put out because there's certain days in prep where I'm like you don't have to kill yourself in the gym today you have to be smart sometimes you've got to just do enough and on those days I'll disappear to a gym like um, my other one down the road a little snap fitness where it's just quiet and peaceful with a really good kit but I can just kind of zone in treat it like a temple and crack on and I don't have to set any like personal records I don't have to impress anybody there's a certain expectation with gyms like these that you're part of because you're expected to turn up, show up and lead the way. You know, I've been in this gym, it's a franchise now really, it's not a franchise but we've got multiple and I've been in it since day dot and we've opened many and you know, I've set some, some good records in the gym with lifting. So there's always a lot of expectancy on me to go in there and do a certain amount 
you know, we've done eight plate squats, we've done eight plate deadlifts, you know, eight plate, um, so five plate benches and all that lark. And, you know, if someone's not truly accustomed to bodybuilding, they just know training, they probably expect you to go in there and do that stuff all the time. And that pressure can be a bit too much. In regards to like how you're gonna feel two weeks out, it, it does vary on the prep, because my prep now is totally different than other preps. Normally I'd be in the gym starving halfway for a workout with a sore stomach thinking, I just wanna get home and eat and get the session wrapped up. Today is quite the opposite. I've said to Yannicka, I like feel a little bit, my stomach doesn't feel great. Um, obviously been having a lot more food on this preparation in order to try and preserve more of the muscle from the off season with a goal in mind to bring, you know, a look that is more full, more impressive in regards to the silhouette. I'll, I'll emphasize this. It's not me trying to cop out of wanting to get in super shape because it's really not. The bodybuilder in me always wants to get up and do cardio at 5 a.m., doesn't it, Yannicka? Like, I'm, that is who I am. That's how I grew up in bodybuilding. I was the guy that was up 4 a.m. at the gym doing cardio before we even opened the doors to the public and out the door before they even got in and then back there later training, kicking ass, burning fat. But, you know, I've got some experience in the pro ranks now and I've kind of got feedback from the judges and you, as much as you can think about the, the goal of wanting to be in your best shape ever, you also have to think of the goal of what is it that's the criteria and what does bodybuilding ask of you and i don't know if this is true or not but from my understanding and the feedback i've had is that muscularity certainly takes precedent over condition alone um you could come into a show as nasty as nails inside out peeled out of your mind but if you don't have the muscle mass to back it there will be bigger people more developed than you who are not as in good condition as you beating you at every show now the, the the truth of the matter is and the hard part is imagine being able to be big and shredded like ronnie coleman that is obviously end goal but right now i'm still trying to master the whole keeping as much muscle and retaining as much of that into a prep as possible so i doubt i'll be in my best shape ever regard in regards to the condition for a couple of years yet because i'm still learning but I'm learning the right way around now, the way that the judges like to see it, so we'll see. Um, so with that being said, energy is not super low. I'm actually feeling pretty all right. Still pretty strong in the gym. Uh, today we performed some good sets. I think I've got like a, an incline Smith. I think it's an assisted Smith. It's got like a cable on it, but I had four plates aside for like 12 or 15 or something. I don't know how many, but it was, it's good. It's like not far off my off season strength. Um, so that's cool and obviously a lot of that can be attributed obviously towards supplements and whatnot that you do in preparation for a show because a lot of them do help your, your strength and endurance um but this preps like i say totally different i used to be a very emotional mess i'm still emotional now something that you will expect um that i expect you all to come across in a preparation is emotions will be heightened especially if you're going hungry when you're hungry everything feels worse than it is um my emotions right now aren't that my emotions are just how long i've been prepping for and being um, lack of sleep. I don't sleep at the minute at all. Um, I wake up in the night and I piss every two hours. I don't know if I piss every two hours because I sleep light or if I sleep light because I piss every two hours. It's really hard to distinguish. I do have a CPAP, but I won't lie to you. I don't use it in a minute because quite frankly, I'm very uncomfortable with it on. So much so that I just hate the thought of putting it on my face. Um, I would advise any of you that do have a CPAP, stupid person driving, do use it, don't listen to me. Um, they are definitely worth using um, and they do help tremendously. I just have a thing at the minute where I find it really difficult to fall asleep in my actual bed as well, um, which obviously is our bed. I've got this like weird habit of waking up in the night and then disappearing downstairs and just watching YouTube and trying to... I'm kind of under this mindset right now. I'm like, well, if you're awake, you're awake because your body wants to be for now. So just deal with it and just like do whatever you enjoy. And if you enjoy listening to something on YouTube, just do it. A time will come where sleep is more apparent. Um, I do nap in the day quite a lot. Like when I get in my office chair, God, I can sit in my office chair after breakfast and I just sit and I put YouTube on or check emails or do some work and I just go. So that's something you will encounter is a lot of sleep, a lot of snoozing in the day. So with that being said, you do definitely want to try and find yourself in a position where that's possible. Um, if you have a, a, a job that's very manual and involves machinery and equipment, then it's not wise to do this. 
you know, if you're in charge of driving buses, if you're in charge of charge of driving machinery on construction sites, I wouldn't suggest doing a bodybuilding prep unless you have holiday in the last few weeks off the show, because you could literally kill somebody because falling asleep. Um, I think that's probably one of the most sensible things I've ever said in my life, actually. Um, again, another thing as well, how you prep is going to determine how you feel. A lot of people really do rely heavily on stimulants and stuff as they get close to a show, you know, your ephrogens and your clenbuterols and all your stuff like that. And as good as they are at keeping you awake and giving you energy, they're also going to make you feel a heavy amount of anxiety. So I probably would suggest trying to limit the use of such things, caffeines and whatnot, um, because you really don't want to cause yourself more anxiety than needed because that's actually a really horrible sensation to live with carries over into other aspects of life you start questioning things and wondering if you know other again aspects of your life are in the right place just because of the anxiety that carries over from taking some stupid things that are just trying to help you keep energy and lose a bit of fat right now i don't have a training partner um is it worth having one it certainly is if you can put up with them i, I have nothing against training partners um, I really do enjoy training with some people sometimes, but I'm also very much on my time. You know, if I go in the gym and I'm like, I'm going to take as long as I need to in this session because one thing I don't want to feel today is pressured, then I'll take my time. But that is a very difficult headspace to get into if you have someone else around you who is on a time constraint. Uh, I, I would say that you should be selfish in prep, you know, and not put other people's time schedules into a factor. Like, put, they shouldn't be a factor. Um, you know, so and so's got to go to work and needs to hurry up. I hate to say it, but fuck him. Don't fucking train with me. Like, I'm getting ready, you're getting ready. We're doing big shows, we're trying to be the best we've ever been. One thing you don't need to be doing is being put on the time limit because of someone else's life. Um, hence why I train alone a lot of the time, unless someone is as free during the day to train as I am during that time. Um, because at the end of the day, the gym is your temple, guys. You know, don't rush prayer. Don't get out of there too soon. Make sure you, uh, you know, get everything off your chest, get your work done don't leave there feeling like you've left anything behind or could have done more or left prematurely because that's another thing that's going to haunt you as well you know you should always have a set amount of work to do for the day and then be happy to tick it off and get out of the gym when it is done uh, you know i have my setup you know i've answered on the previous question how many sets i do if i did any less than those amount of sets i would be pissed unless my body told me otherwise on that day um always stick to the plan um, again, like I said previously, yes, you do want to have options, but with training itself, what you want to be able to have a, a good stranglehold on is the amount of work you do so that you're consistent in that respect because that will dictate and that will dictate and determine what you have to do with your nutrition and stuff because your volume being the same in training means your output's the same, meaning that you don't have to change that factor. That factor can remain and you can just play around with other variables in your prep. Um, if you start shifting the amount of sets you do day in day out your output's changed and then you haven't really got a hold on your input and output which means that you don't really have a clue what you're doing if I'm honest um, someone's parked outside my house we'll see if Yannick kicks off probably will uh, it's Amazon I think Amazon I don't think they're in the truck at the minute. Anyway, so I'll continue this video for a second. We've got a few more things to say. Another thing I would definitely suggest is if you're struggling for money, that should be priority. One thing I wouldn't want people to do is prep for a show and have no money. Um, one, financial debt is something that I've actually lost friends over friend of mine a few years ago was in a position where debt well didn't cause him because every man makes his own decision but put it this way he he committed suicide um, sadly because unfortunately for him the 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 mental strain of that position was too much to take and bodybuilding is an expensive endeavor it's it's not a working class sport like at this level like one thing my friend used to tell me one of my old friends one of my old kind of tutors as such steve avery used to say like this is a middle class kind of sport and even if you're not middle class and you want to do it you better make sure you're earning middle class money because listen i'm not middle class I'm, I'm born from this you know from 
the low, low tier, the streets. You know, I'm, 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 I'm born from like a, a not very nice area. He's always moving. Um, the like, I mean, single parent. Bless her, working her ass off trying to ma maintain two kids. Um, yeah, I'm from that kind of upbringing. Uh, and I could only really commit to bodybuilding by making sure that I was working hard and earning enough money in order to do so from a young age. You know, I made sure I started doing work. Oh, God. I started doing upholstery when I was 14 and I started training in my teens. Uh, and that was, I was getting £20 on a Saturday and that £20, all I would do with it is pay for £20 worth of basically protein for the week. And I would just eat. You know, I know, like, I was probably only managing to get, like, a chicken breast in a day, but when you're 14 years old, that's a lot of protein compared to what you would normally consume. So that was that was my approach then, and then by the time I was, like, you know, kind of later teens, I was doing removals multiple times a week. Uh, and, ag again, putting that money towards the bodybuilding. And then um, I started coaching when I was a bit younger to pay for bodybuilding. Did that for a while. It let me commit. Because you can't commit to something if you can't afford to do something. Um, you know, you can have all the intention in the world and you can have all the ideas in the world and you can train really hard, but if you go to the gym and you train your ass off really hard, but you haven't got the money to feed yourself in order to respond, you know, recover from that training or have adequate nutrition or put a roof over your head, then it's going to go nowhere. So I suppose the, 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 the last bit of advice on this video, I don't know if this is an advice video, I'm just rambling off. That's what these are for anyway, it's just for me to express a lot of opinion and hopefully help some of you along the way make sure you have enough income to bloody do bodybuilding don't rush it you know if you're not on stage in your teens it don't matter like better be prepared for when you do step up there than to be unprepared and do it prematurely so yeah good session today feel strong two weeks out from the olympia literally officially today had a little look at my body after i don't know how i look really I, i'm past that now i just kind of i obviously work with jordan peters who's a good friend of mine and i'm just like jordan i send you pictures in the morning body weight you just tell me what to do and I'll do it because I don't want to make decisions anymore because it's really hard to actually see now what's going on. Uh, and this happens to a lot of people like one person in particular, John Meadows, I remember one year handed over the reins to Neil Hill a couple of weeks out. I think it was from the Arnold 212. And John knew everything inside out. But it just shows you what happens to your own vision when you're that close to a show. Even the best of the best, which I'm not, uh, when it comes to like seeing and reading myself i'm learning but i'm not there yet need help so that's another thing last thing doing a show two weeks out make sure you've got some good eyes around you who have been consistent throughout the entire prep so it's not just some random last minute who doesn't blow smoke who can be honest with you and it doesn't have to be a coach it can just be someone who has a good eye um, because all you really need to know is if you're moving in the right direction or not i suppose that's it yeah right Gonna get this down me, post workout, and then uh, chill for a bit. And uh, I haven't really answered a question on this, but I've kind of spilled some personal things and feelings and hopefully some good insight. And if it becomes of benefit to anybody, then I've done my fucking job. And I'm happy with that. So uh, this is AMAs, it is the Ask Me Anythings. And this video was kind of coaxed along by some people reaching out to me and asking some stuff. So there's always reason. I don't just say stuff because I think I should. I say stuff normally in response. So this is a kind of response video to a few people that have kind of had questions that have amalgamated into one. From me and Yannicka, wherever she is, I will see you again later in the week from us all at AMAs.